and welcome to High School Physics Explained. Today I want to show you how refraction works. And today I'm also using the excellent animation from the FET site, which is an uh, interactive site from the University of Colorado. First of all, before we go on, uh, let me describe what we've got here. We've got a laser sitting over here, which we are able to move around. We have two materials here. Uh, this is going to be air and this is going to be water, though we can actually change this to different substances. And we also have this dotted line, which is called the normal. And it is basically an imaginary line that is perpendicular to the surface. And in this case, it's going to be drawn exactly where the laser will hit this boundary. So what happens? So let's turn the laser on. And you can see, first of all, we have the laser light hitting the boundary, and then it bends. It does not travel straight through the substance. There's some that is reflected off, but we are only interested at the moment in this aspect of this bending. And you can clearly see that if I change the angle of my laser, then the angle that this bends will bend as well uh, differing amounts. So here you can see I have a very small angle of incidence, but that's the angle, by the way, it's always measured from the normal to the ray. Then we have only a small deviation over here, but if I turn this quite sharp, then the amount of bending is actually quite strong. Well, what causes this bending? Well, it co is caused by the fact is that the average speed of the light in the material changes. And the amount that it changes is due to the refractive index of the substance. So the refractive index is a measure of the factor of the speed of light slowing down. So for example, air, which is practically a vacuum, when compared to a vacuum, the speed of light changes very small. Uh, in fact, we say the refractive index of a vacuum is, is one. Uh, now for air, it's actually slightly larger. It's 1.00028. And for all intents and purposes, that's I might as well just say it's one. But in glass, it's 1.5. In other words, what's happening is, is that if the speed over here of light is C, then over here, the speed of light in the this substance is not C, but it's actually C divided by 1.5. It slows down a little bit. So that is actually our new C. Okay, and because it's and that's basically what this refractive index is all about. When we have our wave over here and we move this and so forth, I want you to note that the way we describe this is as that the light bends towards the normal. So I have here certainly a wave, it is certainly not going straight ahead, it's actually bending towards this normal. Okay, and so that's the way we describe it. Okay, well, what about the reverse? Imagine we are, this is here is water and this is air. Uh, well, we can change that very quickly. So what we do is we change the situation and we change this to glass and this to air. And you can see now that if I have my laser on, my light bends not towards the normal, but it bends away from the normal. And that's how we talk about it. Uh, and you can still see that we also have some reflection here at the boundary. So let's go back to our other situation where we're looking at going from a less dense medium to a more dense medium. So here we have uh, again air and glass and the bending goes from the air to the glass. The question is, is how much does this bend by? Well, first of all, it depends on the material. So for example, if I go to water, you can see it doesn't bend as much because the refractive index is less. How do we actually work that out? Well, that was initially worked out by a guy named Schnell, and he developed a law called Snell's Law. And Snell's Law basically says this, that if you get the refractive index of where you're going to, which is this guy over here, and we divide it by the refractive index of where you're coming from over here, then the, the variation is equal to the sine of the angle of incidence divided by the sine of the angle of refraction. In other words, if we have, in our case, if I were to get my protractor out like so, 
and I were to work out that angle, you can clearly see that angle there is, and I'm going to make it nice, nice and simple for us, I'm going to make that equal to 30 degrees. So as a result, I can have the sine of 30, because that's my angle of incidence over here. Now my angle of refraction here, if you look at that, that's this angle right here. And so I get, I get 10, I get 20, I get 23, and that is equal to the sine 23. Well, that equals the refractive index of where I'm going to, and that's how I remind people, it's where you're going to. And so I get that is equal to 1.33 in our case. And of course, the value for air is one. So that is actually the mathematical relationship. And if you were to plug this into your calculator, based on the precision or the lack thereof of my projector over here, you can actually see that this is true. That is great. And we're going from air to water. But of course, it's not always going from air. So let's just clear these annotations. And now let's have a look at a case where we're going from water to glass. The amount of bending is really small. It's, and that's because we're going from now from water to glass, which is 1.33 to 1.55. So mathematically speaking, the ratio now is not 1.5 over 1 or 1.33 over 1. It's now 1.5, where we're going to, over 1.5. 3, 3. And again, the angle is still the same. Um, that is equal to sine 30. I don't think I've changed it much. Let's have a look. And so here we go. Okay, roughly the same. Here we go, sine 30. You can see the amount of bending is now, it's practically almost still 30. And that's simply because we're going from air to glass or air to water, but actually from water to, to glass. And so it's not just dependent on where you're going to, but also dependent on where you're coming from. And I'll finish off on in this particular point, uh, but this actually helps you understand a little bit about why you see blurry underwater. So your eyes are filled with a gelatinous substance called aqueous humor and vitreous humor, and, and you also have a lens. And the light is actually bending as it goes from air at the surface of your eyeball to that aqueous and vitreous humor, which is about the same uh, refractive index as water. And so what you end up getting is that forms an image on the back of your eye and it is in focus because it has to bend a certain amount. But if you then submerge your eyes in water, so you go swimming, well, what's happening there? It's now the light's bending from water to, um, to something very similar. So it's not bending much at all. Hence, it looks very blurry. Um, and that's because your eyes are designed to bend light to going from air to the uh, substances in the eyeball. Um, how do you resolve that? How do you want to see clear in the water? Well, you stick some air in front of your eyes and that's what goggles are all about. So um, that's a practical application of refraction and how light bends as it goes from a less dense medium to a more dense medium and of course also the calculations based on Snell's law. Hope that helps. I hope you found that video useful. And remember, like, share and subscribe. Oh, and if you have a comment or a question, or you'd like a concept for me to explain to you, please drop a comment down below. I'm Paul from High School Physics Explained. Bye for now.